What is up guys, Wrestling Premiere is here. Now, you obviously know who today's video is about. But before I start talking about them, I just want to ask you guys, what Royal Rumble do you want me to review next? 2004, 2005, 2009, 2015, 2000? Comment it down below. Whatever gets the most likes is the one I'm going to be doing. Now, let's talk about this guy. Man, he could have been world champion. It's simple as that. They shouldn't have tweaked this character at all. I mean, you don't fix anything that's broke. In this video, I'm going to cover Mohamed Hassan's sudden rise and sudden fall from WWE. I'm not really good at intro, so let's get into it. Mark Kopani, better known as Mohamed Hassan, debuted on WWE's main roster in late 2004. Vignettes played on Ross signaling the arrival of Hassan. Hassan's character was that of an Arab American who was treated like everyone else, but then 9-11 happened and he's treated like a second class citizen. He basically had enough of America's disdain for Arabs and he just wanted everything to go back to how it was. This was how it was initially. He wanted to be treated like an American, since he is one, but since it wasn't going to go back to how it was, he had enough. Now. Mohammed Hassan and Davari, Khosrow Davari, debuted on the December 13, 2004 episode of Raw. They interrupted Mick Foley who was cutting a promo on the troops. Hassan said that he used to support the troops but then 9-11 happened. He said that people like him are the real victims in these wars. He then said that he's a prisoner in his own country. He also said he feels America's patriotism everywhere. Foley then replied to Hassan saying that he feels Hassan, but he disagrees with nearly every word he said. The hardcore legend then said that he's annoyed that Hassan interrupted his promo after being 8 months away. Hassan continued to insult the troops, which led to Foley defending the troops. The Vari shouted in some language, Hassan and Foley continued going back and forth with one another, and Foley invited Hassan into the ring. Hassan took off his suit, but then he backed out of the fight. Mohammed Hassan said that he won't fight a man that he doesn't respect. Two weeks later, Stacy Keebler was in the ring when Hassan and Davari came out. Davari shouted at Stacy to leave the ring in some language. I heard it's Persian. Davari introduced Mohammed Hassan. Hassan then mentioned Christmas and he said that Americans show goodwill only to those that they want to show goodwill to. He said that deep down in their hearts, they are prejudiced. The fans booed him and they chanted USA. Hassan also said that his New Year's resolution is to beat some sense into Americans. Davari then went up to Lawler and JR and said that these two are what's wrong with America. Lawler heard enough and he threatened to beat both of them. Hassan then shoved JR and the king and Lawler stood up. Then there was a standoff. That was all. Eric Bischoff then set up a debate for the following week. On the first Raw of 05, Hassan and Davari faced JR and King in a debate. Right when Hassan began to speak, the audience chanted USA. After the crowd stopped booing, Hassan said that America is a racist country. He said that Arab Americans have been discriminated since long ago. Hassan also said that Americans used a national tragedy as an excuse to discriminate Arabs. USA chants intensified. He said that if he went to Times Square, then he'd definitely be searched because of how he looks. Then it was JR and King's turn to speak. The crowd was 100% on their side. Lawler said that there are racists in this country, but there's racists and idiots in every country. The King said that he has no problem with Hassan coming out and expressing his feelings, but he has a problem with the fact that Hassan calls the troops gutless cowards. Lawler then said that Hassan and Davari aren't hated for being Arabs, but because they are jackasses. Hassan agreed with Lawler that Arab Americans aren't like him. He then said that most Arab Americans make him sick. He also said he won't embrace a racist nation. JR disagreed with this and Hassan said that JR is a leader of these puppets. He also said that JR is sick of the fact that Hassan is as American as him. He then mentioned the Oklahoma Sooners, Pi, American culture basically. He then said that JR is like America. He talks about him behind his back. Mohammed Hassan dared JR to speak. JR then mentioned that America isn't a perfect place. He then said that Hassan unfairly characterized everyone as a racist. He then mentioned the fact that Hassan insulted the troops. JR then told Hassan that you either love America or you leave it. The crowd was cheering JR and Hassan was fuming. Hassan then assaulted both JR and King and he even busted Lawler open. Hassan choked JR with his belt and Lawler made the save but the duo exited the ring. Damn, they were despised. A match was made for New Year's Revolution, Hassan vs. The King. Hassan and Davari won that match and they moved on from this mini feud. A week later, Hassan and Davari interrupted Jericho who was hosting the highlight reel. Y2J mentioned the highlight reel is a talk show where the host introduced the guest Hassan. Cause Hassan literally interrupted Jericho's promo. Hassan then said that Jericho should get to the point instead of rambling on about himself. Jericho then introduced Hassan and Davari as the crowd booed. He insulted them while introducing them too. Y2J asked them why are they so angry. Jericho mocked Hassan and he asked Hassan if he's happy that he's not in America right now. Cause Raw was in Toronto during this episode. 
Watching Jericho in this promo, man, he's awesome. Hassan said that he felt a connection to Canada because Canadians are considered second class citizens in the US. He then mentioned that the difference between he and Canada is that Canada deserves to be treated like that. He then called Canadians hypocrites and he said that Canadians are just like Americans. Jericho shut him up and he asked the fans to show what they think of Hassan. The fans chanted hole and Davari complained once again. Y2J said that he studied Davari's language and Davari in Jericho's words said that a Fozzy album is coming out tomorrow and that he wants an autograph. Jericho refused to give him one and Hassan shut Jericho up. Hassan mentioned that Y2J was born in America and he lived in Canada. He said that he's the worst of both countries. Chris Jericho on behalf of Canadians and Americans whacked Hassan. Y2J locked them in the walls but Davari latched onto him which gave Hassan the advantage. Hassan locked them in the camel clutch as Davari shouted at Y2J. Chris Benoit came out to make the save. The next week saw Mohammed Hassan qualify for the Royal Rumble. Hassan entered the Rumble at number 13. Everyone in the ring was fighting one another, but then when Hassan entered the ring, everyone became buddies with each other. They surrounded Hassan and Y2J initiated the attack. They stomped on him and Ray gave him the 619. All the guys in the ring then held Hassan in the air and they threw him out of their Royal Rumble. This is a pretty memorable moment to me because they literally teamed up with each other 8 on 1 to throw one normal guy. It wasn't Viscera or someone like that. One normal guy, they threw him over the top rope. The next night on Raw, Hassan complained about the Rumble. He claimed he was discriminated against by 8 of the best superstars in the world. He showed footage of the previous night. Hassan claimed that this was evidence of the fact that America gangs up on him and his Arab American brothers. Hassan said that he isn't gonna take it anymore and that he challenges any one of those cowards. Then he changed the challenge to any American. Out came Sergeant Slaughter who I learned probably wasn't even in the military. Hassan made Slaughter tap out to the camel clutch to continue his undefeated streak. Hassan over the next couple of weeks continued complaining about America and he got a victory against Chris Jericho. It wasn't clean but it was still a win against the first undisputed champion. Hassan on the March 7th 2005 episode of Raw complained to Bischoff about not being included in the Money in the Bank ladder match. The following week, Hassan blamed every one of the fans for not being included on the Wrestlemania card Oh, and, and he called the fence racist again. At WrestleMania, Eugene came out all excited to be there. He was then interrupted by Hassan and Davari. Hassan said that LA has a long and profound history of prejudice and bigotry. He said that he's never been pinned in his career and he has to take a backseat to someone like Eugene. Davari shouted at Eugene and Hassan said that he's gonna create his own WrestleMania moment. He attacked the injured Eugene and he locked him in the camel clutch when Hulk Hogan came out. The crowd went nuts. Hogan cleared the ring and he did his pose. The next night on Raw, Hassan interrupted HBK's promo. Davari spoke and HBK sat on the turnbuckle. Hassan mentioned the events of last night and he also mentioned HBK tapping out to the ankle lock. Hassan called Shawn Michaels a disgrace for tapping out. Michaels took off his blazer while Hassan continued speaking and HBK slapped the hell out of Hassan and he knocked down Davari. The duo gained the advantage and they ended the segment on top. Davari in Hassan's place beat HBK the next week. Hassan low blown Michaels and the referee was distracted by Davari. Davari capitalized on it and Shawn Michaels lost basically. Shawn Michaels demanded a handicap match against the duo at Backlash. Bischoff refused to accept Michaels demands and instead made a tag match for the pay per view. Michaels Michaels had to find a tag team partner. Michaels later that night decided to call for Hulk Hogan to team up with him. Off topic, but the HBK and Hogan feud was pretty good. Minus the result at SummerSlam, I enjoyed it. Anyways, the match at Backlash was electric. I remember the crowd was really into it. Like, I haven't watched it in five years, but I do remember the crowd, like, vividly. Like, they were awesome that night. Hogan and HBK won the match, and the next night on Raw, Hassan blamed Davari for the loss. Hassan slapped Davari twice and he kicked him in the head. The fans chanted for Hogan to come out, he didn't, and Davari crawled to the back behind Hassan. Hassan, I assume, forgave Davari on an episode of Raw, I'm not sure though. On the May 30th, 2005 episode of Raw, Mawad Hassan barged into Bischoff's office and Hassan demanded a title shot because he's undefeated. And he said that the reason why he hasn't been given a title shot is because of racism, basically. He said they're racist for not giving him a title shot. Batista cut him off. Batista said he wants to shut Hassan up. Bischoff made the match official and Batista slapped the hell out of Davari. Now, that match was a one-sided affair. Batista got himself DQ'd and he beat the living daylights out of both Davari and Hassan. He made them bleed too. Batista was really awesome at the time. The next week, Hassan thought he won the Intercontinental title. Davari grabbed the title and then was about to put it on Hassan's waist, but the referee started the match because Shelton's foot was on the bottom rope. Shelton ended up beating Davari to retain the title. This was apparently a handicap match, so that is why Davari and Hassan faced Shelton Benjamin. 
Hassan later on complained to Bischoff backstage, and Bischoff told Hassan that Stone Cold is gonna listen to his grievances next week. The two confronted Austin, and Austin called them sand people. Austin gave him his rematch for the IC title, and during the rematch, Hassan low blowed Benjamin while the ref wasn't looking. Austin decided to get involved, and he stomped a mud hole in Hassan. The ref called for the DQ, and Austin hit the stunner on Hassan. Mohamed Hassan got his first WWE Championship match the next week. The only problem for him was, he lost in 5 minutes. I believe this was the very first time Hassan lost clean, so yeah. On that week's SmackDown, Hassan was traded to the blue brand. Everyone in the ring was disgusted. Cole and Taz were disgusted. The fans chanted USA. And Hassan once again said that he's treated like a second class citizen. He then said he is deserving of being the SmackDown champion. He claimed that Teddy Long is ashamed of him and he said that he's different from all of these people and that he's better than them. He told Benoit that he's never beaten him on Raw. He called Booker T a five-time loser. Hassan then claimed that he could beat Big Show any day of the week. Then he went up to JBL and he called him a big quitter. Teddy Long then put him in the six-man title match for the next week. Then all of the guys in the ring jumped him. The bar was then thrown onto Hassan, and Hassan was booked to face Big Show a few minutes later. Hassan beat Big Show, and it wasn't clean, but it was once again a victory. The next week, Hassan cut a promo on Independence Day. He said that he feels like a prisoner in his own country, and that it ends tonight because he's winning the SmackDown Championship. The fans booed him once again. The Undertaker came out to the ring, and Hassan said that The Undertaker may not be like all these Americans. Hassan said that The Undertaker is come and gone, so that is why the dead man came out to the ring. He then said that The Undertaker has beaten everyone except him. The dead man was about to choke slam Hassan, but Davari blasted The Undertaker with a chair. The Undertaker performed the choke slam on Davari as Hassan stood outside the ring. During the title match, Undertaker whacked Hassan with a chair, and Hassan ran to the back, which eliminated him. The next week was basically the beginning of the end of Muhammad Hassan. On the July 7, 2005 episode of SmackDown, The Undertaker faced Davari. The dead man made easy work of Davari, but after the match, Hassan was smiling. Hassan then went down on his knees, and a few masked men came out. They brutalized The Undertaker, and Hassan was directing traffic. They choked The Undertaker, and Hassan locked The Undertaker in the camel clutch. After the match, the masked men held Davari on top of them like a martyr. This might have been controversial on its own, but the biggest problem with this is the fact that the London attacks happened on the very same day SmackDown aired. Like, why couldn't they have edited it out? Like, they could have just removed it from the airing. They did put a disclaimer before and during the show, but why didn't they just edit it out? WWE received criticism from several media outlets, and rightfully so. They shouldn't have done that at all, and they should have removed it. This screwed Hassan over, and it wasn't his fault. UPN banned the Hassan character from TV from there on. The next week, Hassan's lawyer came out to the ring. Hassan was banned, so his lawyer read a statement from Hassan. I think you guys already know that's Tommaso Ciampa. He said that Hassan wants freedom for discrimination, and he rambled on until The Undertaker came out. The dead man choke slammed Ciampa, and he also performed a tombstone on him. Now, the match at the Great American Bash was mostly one-sided. The Undertaker beat up the Masked Men and Davari after the match. The Undertaker then choke slammed Hassan on the steel stage, and he performed the last right on Hassan through the stage. And that was it for Hassan and WWE. They were planning on repackaging him, but I believe Hassan didn't want to. I mean, no matter what gimmick he was given, he was still gonna be known as Muhammad Hassan. It doesn't matter if he teamed up with freaking Simon Dean, he was still gonna be known as Muhammad Hassan. He was possibly one month away from becoming the youngest world champion in WWE history, and now he's not on TV. I believe there was this rumor that Hassan was gonna move to Raw, but I believe USA Network refused to allow him to appear on their network, so yeah. Mark Copani was released from his WWE contract on September 21st, 2005, along with Daniel Pewter, I think? Davari returned on the November 7th, 2005 episode of Raw as Kurt Angle's manager. And that's it. I believe Hassan was supposed to beat Batista in Washington at SummerSlam. Like, imagine he beat him in Washington, D.C. So yeah. It all changed with one segment. That changed Hassan's career. That is all. If it wasn't for that segment, maybe Hassan would have been a world champion. Who knows? And that's it for this video. Make sure you hit a camel clutch on the like button and perhaps a last ride on the subscribe button. Peace. I'm out.